Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first Atlantic Electronic Webinar about the EPIC sensors for measurement of bioelectric signals of plastic semiconductors. My name is Ulrich Lehmeyer. I'm the responsible line manager for plastic semiconductors at Atlantic Electronic and will tell you more about the benefits of the capacitive EPIC sensors of plastic semiconductors in the next 30 minutes, together with my colleague, Mr. Jan Anikolic, FIE for Plessy at Atlantic Electronic. You do not need to make notes as we will send you the shown presentation after the webinar. In addition to this webinar, we will record and publish this on our Atlantic Electronic YouTube channel soon. If you have questions during the webinar, please use the NetViewer chat area on the right. We will try to answer the questions later after the end of the webinar. Let's go through the agenda of the next 30 minutes. At first, we will shortly introduce Plessy Semiconductors Limited, followed by a brief introduction what the, what the term EPIC stands for. After that, Ms. Nikolic will tell you more about the technical features and different available versions of EPIC sensors and will also give you an overview about the available evaluation kits and demos for EPIC sensors of Plessy semiconductors. In the end of the webinar, we will show you two typical applications for EPIC sensors where Atlantic Electronic, if needed, can be of further assistance to you to improve time to market for your product with further products and components or support by hardware and software engineering services. Let's start now with a brief introduction of Plessy Semiconductors. The company name Plessy Semiconductors can be tracked back to 1957 and was always associated with the development of innovative products since the early beginning. A key role in its development department was the manufacturing of semiconductors transistors which were invented in the late 1940s. Plessy Semiconductors has its headquarters in UK Plymouth and usually is called Plessy Semix locally. At the time, Plessy could be split in three divisions. The resistors division, which produced key components for electrical goods. The connectors division, which made heavy electrical units, including uh, many of, uh, of them were used in um, aircraft and tanks the pre-formations division producing permanent magnets. In 1989, Plessy Semiconductors was taken over by GEC and was called GEC Plessy Semiconductors thenceforth. In 1998, Zahling Semiconductors, daughter company of Metal Group, bought GEC Plessy Semiconductors. In the year 2010, the company has been re relaunched as Plessy Semiconductors Limited. These days, the product portfolio of Plessy Semix is separated into three total different product areas than in the past. First of all, the EPIC sensor division. With its sensor portfolio, we will introduce to you to in today's webinar. Secondly, the Magic High Brightness LEDs division with its cheap and reliable gallium nitride on silicon LEDs made in UK, Europe. First samples of the entry level LEDs are already available. Um, mid power LEDs will follow soon and the higher po high power LEDs will be available next year. Thirdly, there's the multi-market product division. Plessy is known for since the 1950s. Today offering DYB demulators, synthesizers, power splitters, and lock amplifiers. Plessy wants to address dedicated markets and customers with its portfolio. Plessy wants to address main markets like the smart cities, consumer applications, 
the health and fitness area, the medical technology area, and last but not least, the automotive area. I hope everybody of you is, uh, belongs to one of these uh, areas. Let's continue with the main topic of this webinar. The award-winning EPIC sensors of Plessy Semix, where Plessy again showed their instinct for innovative sem semiconductors. Impressively proved by several awards Plessy won for since 2011. What is EPIC standing for? EPIC stands for Electric Potential Integrated Circuit. An EPIC sensor is nothing else than an ultra-sensitive electrometer at which the active sensor electrode of the EPIC sensor together with the surface of the human skin are building the electrodes of an capacitor. Impedance converters provide needed input impedance um, for the measurement of ECG signals, at least two sensors are needed that measure the bio signals across the heart. Usually, used measuring points are, for example, the left and the right hand, or the left arm and one of the fingers of the right hand. Due to its electrical character and the conductance of the human body, these signals are also measurable outside of the body in a certain distance. The gained analog bioelectrical signal has to, has to be differential amplified, digitalized, and filtered via DSP afterwards. Main application area for EPIC sensors is, of course, the measurement of an electrocardiogram, or short ECG. That means the measurement of of the activity of the heart. As the principle of the measurement physically is nothing else than the measurement of the changes of an electric field, there are of course other application areas EPIC sensors could be used in in future, as the EMG measurement of the activity of the muscles taking care of the bone skeleton movement, the EOG the measurement of the activity of the eyes, and the EEG, the measurement of the brain activity, as well as the gesture control of electronic equipment or the survey of rooms relevant to security, or every application where minor changes of the electrical field can be measured. Now I will hand over to Ms. Nikolic. She will tell you more about the technical features and variants of the EPIC sensors and will introduce all available applications evaluation platforms and demos to you. Hello everyone. My name is Tatiana Nikolic and as announced within next 10 to 15 minutes I'll be talking about the EPIC sensors made by Plessy Semiconductors. I'll explain in particular main technical differences of EPIC sensors in portfolio and few of their important features and characteristics. Plessy EPIC sensors are available in contact and non-contact version, as presented on this slide. As you can see, the only difference is in the distance between the subject who is presenting one electrode and the electrode of the capacitor. Both versions are basically made as the same sensors, sensor with the same components inside. It is consisting out of the electrode, building the capacitor with the subject, and the IC, integrated circuit. On your left hand side you see that the contact sensors have a coating made either of titanium dioxide or silicon nitride. Those are both dielectric materials, where sensors are kept with those materials only for the case of using them in direct contact with the skin of the subject. The intention is to avoid any possible allergic reaction. Titanium dioxide is even used for implants. Therefore, it's safe to apply such sensor 
with this coating side to the skin. Sensors make no galvanic contact with the body, even in the contact mode. On the right hand side, you see the non-contact sensor, where the distance could be, as stated, up to few meters. The size of the gap depends heavily on the environment where the measurement is performed. The gap has to be then consequently smaller in noisy environments. You can use contact sensors for non-contact applications, as the only difference is this protective coating. Having said about the inside of the sensors, here you see how those components could be placed in different packages. Components of an EPIC sensors are then fit into either the QFN package or a compact package. QFN stands for quad flat no leads, and this package is recommended usually for high volume projects, as they have favorable price comparing with others. You see also some key features of sensors. Voltage gain is either times 10 or 50, which is 20 dB and 34 dB respectively. The input impedance of the sensors is high and they have the industrial operating temperature range. Simple sensors, QFN or compact package version need bipolar power supply. On this slide, you see two more variants where sensors are placed on the PCB, so-called plug-and-play PCB hybrid solution. On the PCB is a charge pump built in to allow unipolar power supply to the hybrid with EPIC sensor. It is orderable as either single-channel PCB with one sensor or the dual-channel with two sensors on the PCB. The LEMO plug-in ensures grounding, improving much the signal noise ratio. Finally, for your test measurements, you may want to use metal can sensors made by Plessy. Sensors are placed in a ragged housing, allowing sensors larger surface for the capacitor electrode and again, very good grounding pair of those sensors could be ordered and connected directly to the standard evaluation kit. Those sensors have also unipolar power supply. They are on your right hand side down. As just mentioned, for testing purposes, Plessy offers the EPIC evaluation kit. The kit is orderable with a pair of CAN sensors or other sensors of your choice, with features you need to feature your tests. It is also orderable with a pair of PCB hybrid sensors. The part of this evaluation kit within the box presented here is so-called DRL, driven right leg circuit, allowing the common mode suppression, which is a very important technique for getting rid of noises while measuring bioelectrical signals 